Today, we become legends. Alright, so the meta settled a little bit after the mid-season patch because so much changed. I didn't want to make a tier list like immediately as the patch dropped because nothing had really been figured out and I'm not an insane galaxy brain theory crafter that can figure out what's good within a week. So now that the patch has been out a couple of weeks and people have figured out what's kind of good and there's going to be a new patch coming soon, I felt I'd do a tier list. Obviously, like I said, patch still hasn't been out too long so things are very subject to change and it could be that in a week or two the meta gets completely blown wide open and a lot of these placements are inaccurate but... If that does happen, I'll probably make another tier list again if things change significantly, and I'll also probably have a top 3 gods for every role video coming out soon once the meta stabilizes. But yeah, I do like doing tier lists as well, because the top 3 gods for every role only really explains sort of the top picks of the meta, and it's good to sort of discuss everyone, so yeah, let's start off with Achilles. Alright, I forget that the Smite tier list website has like a default D tier, but no, no S plus or A plus tier or anything like that. I feel like it should start like this, because this is how most people do tier list formats for Smite. But anyway, yeah, sorted that out. So... Achilles, I think, is pr probably an A-plus character. Obviously, he plays multiple roles. I'd say he plays jungle and support to an A-tier level, and he's probably like an A-plus jungler, so I think he's definitely a solid A-plus pick. Obviously, playing multiple roles is going to place you a little higher than a god that plays a single role, but yeah, I think Achilles is pretty solid in all of the roles that he plays, and in terms of solo lane performance, I'd say he's probably a little bit above average. Acne, pretty balanced mid laner. Makes decent use of the items, like the new Spear of the Magus is pretty good on him because he can apply it from range with the bomb to multiple people, which is very nice, but he already made good use of the previous Spear of the Magus, so it's not a huge deal for him. Not much really changed for him in the mid-season patch at all, and he's still a very balanced mid. AMC? Probably A tier. I would have had him in B before this patch, but um, he's actually seeing a little bit more play now as a mid laner because of all the magical ADCs running around. Uh, like he does see a little bit of play in ADC, but for the most part he's actually like a nice flexible mid laner if you need a physical mid because you have a magical ADC, so A tier for AMC. Arpwash is pretty garbage. I don't know whether I put him in C because he does have some value in um, providing anti heal, but honestly I feel like we're coming out of the healer meta a little bit. Like Afro's, Afro's become a lot less uh, prioritized hell too as well. Um, and like a lot's changed in the midseason patch to where like the healers aren't quite as dominant as they once were. But having anti heal is still really good against like all the Ring of Hikate abusers and stuff like that. I don't know. I think I'll put him in C for now. I, I might move him around, but he just doesn't seem that valuable. He's way too easy to dive in team fights. He's honestly pretty easy to dive in um, like just the mid game stuff. Like he gets dived in mid for free by a lot of the top junglers right now. I just don't think he's a safe enough mid laner to really play. And her balanced ADC. Much like AMC, he can flex into a mid roll if uh, you have a magical ADC, which is very nice for him. And he's just pretty balanced. And has always been mostly a balanced character, maybe a little bit above or below sometimes, but for the most part, he hovers roughly around A tier. Armor, S probably. I don't think she's quite S plus level, but honestly, the changes to solo haven't really impacted her that much. If anything, they probably made her better. Like, she did use the old Berserker Shield, but she didn't rely on it as a crutch, like, you know, Arthur relied on Glad Shield as a crutch, for example, and some other gods. Um, and she can still make use of the new items really well. She does well with Gaia, she does well with the new Berserker Shield. I've even been trying Atalanta's bow on her. It's probably a meme, but it's pretty funny. And, uh, yeah, she she's doesn't really lose lane to any matchups, to be honest. She kind of gets bullied, like, by some really high-pressure characters like Kama and stuff like that, but honestly, she does pretty well in lane against almost everyone, and her team fight presence is one of the best among solo laners, so definitely S plus for now. Anubis, so when I discuss Anubis, I always have to mention that this tier list is mostly focused on ranked, and uh, also casuals as well, because they're very similar to ranked, just a little bit less tryhard. It's got a little bit of influence from SPL, but for the most part, I'm basing this around my own experience in ranked and other people's ranked experiences. And I think for ranked and casuals, Anubis is probably A tier. Like, if it was competitive, he'd be B or C because he's very easy to punish with, like, a full five-man comms and stuff like that. But when you don't have comms and, like, you have maximum of two pre-made and ranked and stuff like that, Anubis becomes a lot more valuable because he's a lot harder to shut down. And if you can get a big lead and get your lifesteal items online, Anubis can definitely do well in ranked. Obviously, not any higher than A because he's, I don't think Anubis will ever be higher than A if he's left in his current state, but I think balanced is a fair place to put him right now. Alquang? So you'd think with the whole Ring of Fikate being broken and stuff, Alquang would be a top jungler, but I don't think he's that good. I think he's a little above balance, mostly because he does just abuse Ring of Fikate really well. Like, he's pretty much the only jungler, really, that can make good use of that item, and because it's pretty much the best item in the game, even after the nurse, it's still going to be very strong. I think he, it puts him up a little bit. If Ring of Fikate didn't exist, he'd probably be an A-tier jungler, but I think that item alone bumps him up to A+. Afro, so she's got nerfed, and like I said, 
uh, the meta changed where she's fallen out of popularity a little bit. I think she's still very good, so I'm going to put her in S tier. She's still a very valuable pick and probably ban worthy if you don't like playing against her, but she's not like completely the best god in the game, best mid laner or anything anymore. Generally, people are looking for more burst damage from their mid laners, like high burst mages, or they're looking for hunters so that they can flex a magical ADC in the ADC role. And Aphrodite doesn't really fit any of those. She's not a burst mid laner, really, and she's not a, a hunter, obviously, so... I think she's fallen off in popularity a little bit. ST is probably a good place for her. Apollo, pretty balanced. O on a very similar level to AMC and Anha. I've seen some people try Apollo mid, but it's not the best. He's mostly an ADC. Actually, maybe he's B. If there was a B plus, I'd probably put him there, but I don't really want to clutter the, like, with, like the list with so many tiers. So I think B is probably fine for him. Because I'd say in terms of ADC prevalence, he's probably about the same as these two, but these two also play mid pretty well, and Apollo mid isn't really that good, so I think BT is a good place for him. Arachne? So for ranked and casuals, I'd say Arachne's probably S tier right now. The, the new jungle items, all the auto attack items like Serrated Edge and stuff like that, she obviously does really well with Golden Blade that was buffed recently, even though it did take a nerf. Um, for competitive, she'd probably be like balanced, I think, because sort of like Anubis, she's very easy to shut down, but... In ranked and casuals, when Arachne can just get a lead early and stomp with all the broken auto attack items, I think she's probably an S tier jungler. Obviously, you do want to snowball and end the game quite quickly because late game Arachne is very easy to focus down and blow up because she kind of has to like tunnel vision onto a single target in a team fight. And if she can't immediately get that stun, if she just gets locked down, she's very easy to kill. But um, if you can snowball the game with Arachne, which is very easy to do with how broken the items are right now, like you can get so much farm with Golden Blade and then you rush the Rated Edge and you do so much damage to people, it's insane. So if you can snowball with Arachne, it's definitely worth a try. Ares, pretty balanced support. If you want to be aggressive, if you want to run like a Beads Burner comp, if you also run something else like a Hunbats or maybe a Guardian in solo that can burn Beads quite well, he's definitely very good when you can get big pulls. But overall, just a pretty balanced support if you want to be aggressive. Artemis, I'd say B. Probably on a similar level to Apollo. A lot of people think Artemis is probably like complete garbage, worst god in the game C tier, but I kind of like Artemis in this meta right now. She does decently with the new crit items, not amazing. Um, obviously, compared to like Jingwei and stuff, not going to be as good, but she does decently with the new builds. I think Atalanta's bow is a real help for her because mobility in team fights is why she suffered quite a lot. And obviously she does have one of the best team fighting controls in the game. It's just her early lane pressure is super bad. And if she's ever against a Freya, Ola Run, even Kronos abusing Ring of Hikate in lane, she's going to get absolutely bodied and never get to late game, which is kind of the problem with her right now. If the meta was a bit slower and there wasn't so much high pressure from all the magical ADCs that just outbox her as soon as they finish one item, then I think she might be a bit better. But I think BT is a decent place for her right now. Artio, pretty balanced. I want to say maybe A+, but I think AT is pretty fair for her. She does different things to other supports, like she has a lot of abilities, she obviously has that long duration cripple. Uh, she can get picked on a little bit for her lack of CC immunity, like an Ares or an Athena or something can, uh, can bully her quite hard because of her lack of CC immunity in her kit. Uh, and also a decent solo laner as well, which is why I was considering putting her in A+. I think she's probably like a balanced support and a balanced solo laner, which is potentially worthy of being A+. I might actually put her there, like playing two roles well is probably worthy of being A+, in my opinion. Athena, also A+. She doesn't... She actually is kind of similar to Arceo. She plays a very good support and also a decent solo, I think. I don't think she's really viable in jungle right now, but you can kind of just like aggressively proxy waves and then all over to fights with Athena. She's especially valuable from solo, I think, because obviously you can have that big taunt, but then you also have like a support that's a little bit more peel oriented. So Athena can kind of play the front line and get off big taunts while you have another support that can peel. Um... But also in support, she's very good as well. So I think A plus is pretty reasonable for her. A Wheelix? It's either A or A plus for A Wheelix. I think I'll go with A for now. Obviously, she's a decent jungler. Loses a lot of trades to all the auto attack junglers right now, like Nemesis, Arachne, uh, Baka, those kind of gods, just because they're abusing very broken items right now. But A Wheelix can still make strong use of the other, other good assassin items, like Heartseeker, uh, Crusher, all that kind of stuff. And honestly, I think A Wheelix is viable in solo. Not good, but viable. Like, I, th I think she's pretty balanced as a solo laner. Like, I've been trying her with rushing solo Eater and she's quite strong. Um, and also a very good jungler as well. Potentially worthy of A+, but I think for now I'll leave her in A. Baba Yaga? I think... I want to put her in B, but probably A, honestly. She's super strong if she can get online, but she's a very slow mid laner and she's also not that bursty. Her damage is quite hard to confirm and it comes out very slowly in team fights, whereas, like, a lot of the mid laners right now, you're looking for big burst. Um, or obviously hunter mid laners, like I said, so you can free up a slot for a magical ADC. 
But um, once she can get online, she is a very strong god, like in the mid and late game. But her early game is so, super weak. Like she doesn't, she has a hard time clearing waves. Obviously, she wants to stack, so that slows her down as well. And you kind of got to build your comp around her a little bit, and obviously play around the fact that you have a slower mid laner compared to a lot of others. But other than that, I think she can be pretty good. Bacchus, I'm not a big fan of Bacchus right now. I think I might put him in B. He's obviously a good aggressive support. He has the built-in anti-heal, which is really nice against Ringer for Kase abusers and some of the healers that are still quite prevalent, like Afro and Hell, which is very nice. But honestly, Bacchus just gets picked on. Like, if you flop in and engage and your team aren't with you, which often in ranks and casuals, your team are not with you because you don't have full comms, and then you just get absolutely blown up because you have no CC immunity in your kit. And if you use your flop, that's, you know, you're using your mobility to engage with him. So if you use that, you have no mobility, no CC immunity, you're probably just dead if your team aren't ready to instantly follow up, which can be a problem. I think in competitive, backers is a little better because you can call out that you're going to flop in and have immediate team follow up and also have your team there to bail you out if like you miss the flop, for example. But um, in ranked and casuals, Bacchus is a super risky pick. He can be very good, but I think he's pretty situational, which is why I've got him in B. Bacchusura, first S plus god. I said, I said when they initially buffed Bacchus, I had no idea why they were doing it because obviously Golden Blade was absolutely busted, which is Bacchus best item and allows him to just power farm. And also they were bringing out Serrated Edge, which is decent on Bacchus as well. Um, he just abuses the auto attack items really well. And you know, you buy Golden Blade, you out farm everyone, you steal their camps by just like auto attacking the back one. Um, killing the side ones with golden blade and then eating it and there's pretty much nothing they can do about it uh you get a big farm lead you're like two three levels up on the enemy jungler you just invade everything they have they can't stop you because you're two three levels up and then you just puke on the entire enemy team and hopefully snowball to a win he's not the best late game and can be easy to shut down if he doesn't get a big lead but it's so easy to get a big lead on backer that i think he has to be s plus right now obviously only really sees playing jungle i wouldn't recommend trying to play like backer solo or anything like that he's mostly a jungler but with the abuse of Golden Blade and the other auto attack items, this guy's just insanely strong. Baron Samdi, probably A tier. I think he's a good mid laner, a good solo laner, and a passable support. He's not the best support right now, but um, yeah, decent mid laner and can also work quite well in solo. You can lean a little bit more damage oriented now in solo because uh, of how the meta shifted over there. And honestly, he's not bad. He's got good CC. He's quite good for utility if you're building him from solo, like a little bit tanky. And um, he does have decent burst damage from mid, but it does come out a little slowly because often he has to like throw his three and then his two and then his one and it doesn't come out instantly, but it's not bad, honestly. I think Baron's pretty balanced. Bastet doesn't make any good use of the new items, was already kind of bad. Um, like she just, she can burst pretty hard with like, you know, a, a standard Heartseeker build, but she just, she has a lack of item pool, I feel like with Bastet. Like you don't really want Hydras on her. She doesn't make use of the auto attack items at all. She doesn't really have, like, a good six-item build, I feel like, with Bastet. She only has, like, four items that she really wants. I feel like if she had some other really powerful items that she could have used, like Heartseeker, she might be a bit stronger. But, uh, yeah, she also relies heavily on her ult. If you don't have your ult in a team fight, like, if you use it and the enemy just backs off and you waste it, you're completely useless, which is a problem. Bologna, I think, is pretty underrated. She uses Zerg Shield really well. I think she can actually use Serrated Edge pretty good as well. Like, if you're bludgeoning and then, um, just freeing someone to disarm and then dashing in and using your block stacks to like box a hunter you get full serrated edge benefit and i think it's actually a pretty underrated item on her like as, as your one damage item or maybe your, your two damage items because you can kind of get away with that on solo laners right now like if you go in like berserker shield as like a hybrid item and serrated edge you can box hunters insanely well uh even auto attack mages you can do quite well like the block stacks are super valuable right now because you're often having like enemies with a magical adc and a hunter in mid so the block stacks become really valuable. Plus, there's of course all the auto attack junglers. Mercury's pretty good. Bacchus really good. Arachne. The block stacks are insane against Arachne because she doesn't get the stun. Honestly, I feel like Bologna's really undervalued. I might even move her up to S. Yeah, I'm going to go out on a limb and put her up to S here. I think most people wouldn't agree that she's as, as strong as an S tier and is probably more like an A plus tier. But I feel like Bologna's being underutilized right now. She's an insanely good meta call against all the auto attack junglers, the hunter mids, the magical ADCs abusing Ring of Hikate. She's one of the best solo learners for dealing with that. And she can stay alive in fights while building a little bit of damage and just buy like Thorn, Serrated Edge, Berserker Shield, maybe even Nemean or Frostbound, stack up even more block stacks and just run at people. And honestly, I feel like she's being very undervalued in the current meta. Kabraken is fine. Maybe B. I just don't really see a reason to pick Kabraken. Like, you can pick him in solo and you can three the wave and play aggressive like that, but 
a lot of the solo laners right now can just kind of get around that and just clear it away from a decent distance and like you're not really going to get that big of a lead. You can play him jungle I guess, he has pretty good burst but you're probably better off just going for one of the like broken assassin junglers instead of Kabraken and his support isn't isn't good honestly, he's, he's definitely like a below average support. Maybe I'll put him A because he plays three roles to a mediocre level which I feel like is maybe worthy of A tier because like these B tier picks are like they play one role and they play it mediocre whereas Kabrakan plays three roles mediocre so maybe he deserves to be one tier higher. Kamazot's still a valuable pick as a solo laner and decent as a jungler as well. Uh, actually does very well with Serrated Edge because you can often like jump in you one you two and then like that's kind of all your damage gone on Kama but if you have Serrated Edge you can actually like stick to people with auto attacks and do quite well. Um, and he works well with the lifesteal. I think he's still great as like a high pressure solo laner. Um, as like a counter pick to some of the gods that are like looking to play more defensive. You can just bully them out, proxy and rotate early and look for early objectives and things like that. Kama still does what Kama did before. It's just the sustain and like high pressure is a little bit less valuable in solo right now. And uh, it, there's a lot of gods that have risen up in the meta that do better against him. And obviously it's still a decent jungler. Like I'd say he's probably maybe an A plus jungler, but like an S tier solo laner, which is why I think he's S right now. Kurnanos is decent. He makes pretty good use of the new builds, but like not really better than anyone else. You tend to like to go pen on Kurnanos, not um not crit, which is which kind of sucks. Like he doesn't make good use of the new broken crit items like Silver Branch and Wind Demon and stuff. Obviously not not new, but like the changed uh, broken crit items. Um you tend to want to go the pen build with him, which I feel like the pen build hasn't really been figured out because everyone's been going crit and there's been less experimentation with it, but like a 40% pen plus execution during kin size build is actually really strong on Kononos. Cerberus, he's been seeing a lot of play actually. I think I'll go with A plus because he's a decent support and a very good solo laner actually. I think it's like an A plus solo laner but probably an A tier support. Obviously his passive is getting a lot of value right now with a lot of um, junglers having a lot of sustain and obviously the magical ADCs with the Ring of Picate, healers are still decent. Um, so his passive gets a lot of value and he's honestly just a very good high pressure soul lane guardian that can just kind of build Gaia and almost never lose lane because you just have so much sustain and you just outbox people and then his team fight presence is pretty good it's nice to have a soul laner that can just like dive in and either burn beads or get people out of position because then like your support can follow up and things like that or your jungler can dive in once their beads are burned and get free kills uh, like if you if you if you ult in a Cerberus and like burn their beads and Aegis and then the backer comes in afterwards and just ults their entire team, it's kind of just free kills. Chak is bad still. The new items don't do good for him. I've seen people trying to make him work in like support and jungle. I don't think that's viable. And as a solo laner, yeah, he pressures the lane like he always has done. But I don't see why you would pick a lane bully that doesn't do much in team fights when you could pick a lane bully that does pretty well in team fights like Cerberus or Bologna or something. Like obviously they're not the best team fight picks, but they're a hell of a lot better than Chuck. He has like an ult that silences, which is good. Don't get me wrong, but um, once he burns that, he's kind of useless in team fights. I feel like even in this meta where like the attack speed slow from the rain is very valuable, I still don't feel like he's that good. Changa, I honestly don't really have any clue where Changa is. No one plays her. I feel like I haven't had any experience playing against Changa, and I haven't really seen anyone else play her either. So I guess I'll just put her A tier. I think she's decent as a solo laner kinda can work in mid. That's it though. Like she had a, a spark like a, a few seasons ago where she was a decent jungler but I don't think that's viable anymore especially with all the high pressure assassins that we're seeing in jungle. She'll just get her stuff invaded 24-7. But uh, from solo I think she can do some decent work building like a hybrid build. Cherno probably A+. He does still pretty well in ADC. The global rotation is really good. He can split push uh, but he also works decently well as a mid laner if you want to flex him into mid and have a magical ADC. That works too. Chiron Probably A. Similar situation to Chernobog, he can work in ADC but also works as a mid laner as a flex pick. There's just not much of a reason to pick Chernobog over some of the other ADCs and mid laners. Kronos, A+. One of the lesser good Ring of Hikate abusers but he still abuses it pretty well so um, it has to be a little bit above the balance point I feel like. Obviously nowhere near as good as like Freya, Olorun, even Sol but Kronos still uses the item pretty well and it's nice to have that magical ADC presence. Cthulhu, S+. Plus. S+, plus solo laner, probably an S tier support. I feel like he's not insane in support, but he's definitely insane in solo. The amount of just team fight presence this guy brings, like you can just ult and walk at a team, half health their backliners. If you're fed, you can probably just kill their backliners and there's almost nothing they can do about it. You can pop thorns before you ult as well if you're scared of them burning you down. 
Like, you can just be first one in in team fights, create so much space for, like, your assassin to follow up and your carries to just free cast in the back line while you're, while you're taking all the aggro. And you're so tanky that often, even if the enemy team, like, hard focuses you down when you dive, as long as you have decent team follow up, he can survive sometimes. And even if he doesn't survive, he takes so much to kill him that, like, your team can just run over the enemy team. Also, bullies are lane pretty hard in solo. He has a lot of damage. No built in sustain, but you can go Gaia on him, which is really good because he has a ton of max health and also just the sustain is very good on him. Honestly, just a good god at all stages of the game. Bully's lane super hard in solo. You can play him in support as well. I think he's viable there too. But I think he's better as like a solo lane diver. I should probably start going a little bit quicker here. Feels like this video has gone a long time. So Kukulun, actually very good. I like Kukulun right now. I think I'll put him in S. I think he's a little bit below where I would put like Amaterasu and Bologna, but he's definitely above these A plus picks. Can go Son of Gaia, can go Mystical Male, can even go Soul Eater, though I wouldn't really recommend it. Just a very good high pressure soul laner that is very hard to lose lane with and does decently well in team fights as well. Cupid, probably A+. We've been seeing a lot more Cupid. He sees a decent bit of play in ADC, but since the buff to his Heart Bomb, where he clears a lot more effectively, he's actually been shooting up as a mid laner, uh, especially in the Magical ADC meta. So yeah, I think Cupid deserves to be put above the balance point. Daji has fallen from Grace, probably B. Like, not only has the meta just shifted away from her with, like, auto-attack items and things like that, I still think she uses Serrated Edge quite well. But, um, just the existence of Nemean Lion and Upgraded Shell has kind of made her irrelevant. Like, if she can't pop her one and get that off onto a carry, like, if their carries build, um, Nemean against you, you're kind of just useless. Which is a real big problem when your main, like, attraction with Daji is, like, diving in and one-shotting the carries and then ulting. If the carry has Nemean or, like, their supports near them and has Upgraded Shell, or even the carry has upgraded shell because that's happening sometimes. She just gets ruined. It's kind of like a side effect of the auto attack meta where people are building Nemean and upgraded shell all the time. Daji just gets ruined because she needs that big auto attack from her one. And if she can't get it, she just does not do enough damage to kill people. Discordia. So she was one of the top mid laners. I feel like she's fallen off a little bit in favor of like some hunters and some higher burst mid laners. I think she's still very good. I almost want to put her in S, but I don't really see her seeing enough play, honestly. So I think I'll go for A plus for her for now. Erlang, I think, is pretty good. I almost want to put him in S, but I think A. I mean, A plus, sorry. Um, I've even seen people going Golden Blade Erlang Shen Jungle and just clearing, like, super fast and kind of power farming in a way that's similar to Baka. Um, he can work in support, and I wouldn't recommend him in solo, really. He's, like, a, a pretty bad solo laner, but he's a very good jungler and a decent support, so I think A+, is a pretty fair place for him. Fafnir, underrated in this meta, I think. Not quite S, I don't think, but A+, like, on the level of, like, Athena. Um, actually, he's, he's better than Athena. I mainly have Athena up here because she plays two roles, though. I think A+, is fair for Fafnir, but definitely underrated. Like, having Coerce in this meta, where you have, like, magical ADCs popping off with Ring of Hikate, and uh, like if you're having a magical ADC plus hunter mid comp and also with the, all the auto attack junglers like if you coerce a backer that's going onto the back line you get so much value from that and you can also burn objectives really fast with dragon form coerce giving it to your entire team like if you have magical ADC and hunter mid or like magical ADC and an auto attack jungler you can burn objectives so fast with Fafnir I think he's super underrated right now. Fenrir kind of sucks. Like, he doesn't really use any of the new items that well. He, he could go Serrated Edge, but he's quite slow in getting his cooldowns off because Brutalize has a long channel time and you want to sort of set up with the one and use it for, like, full value. You don't want to just, like, blow the one just so you can get Serrated Edge. Um, and the old items, he still does okay with them, but honestly, he's just not that strong right now. There's just way better junglers you can go for, and I don't think he's a good soul and I like, not good enough anyway. Freya, S+, plus, probably the best Ring of Hikate abuser, like, probably better than all the run it's pretty close but i think she's probably better than all the run at using that item uh you just you pick her in adc and then as soon as you get ring of Fikate online you outbox every god in the game and it allows you to sort of strengthen her weak like early to mid game and uh, just get farmed up because like no one can really contest you once you get ring of Fikate, so you either farm for free or you just kill the enemy adc over and over again if they foolishly try to fight you and then once you get to freya's late game it's obviously still freya she can like three shot your carries um and she's relatively safe she's not uber safe but she's pretty safe with the ult like the ult buys you enough time for your support to come over and peel for you and stuff like that uh yeah freya's super strong right now ganesha is pretty fair long duration silence is always nice the ult can be good for like zone control and uh, he's actually very good for burning objectives because of the ult. You can pump like 2k damage into an objective pretty early with him. But uh, he doesn't really bring too much to the table that other supports don't offer. So I think he's pretty balanced. Geb is decent. 
He's actually not been seeing very much play, but I feel like he's still above the balance point. Like, having Geb Shield to protect your important carries, like, having Geb Shield protects your Freya, protects your Roller Run, things like that is very good. Um, and obviously, the ult, is, uh, the ult has always been good on Geb. Guan Yu, actually not bad as a solo laner, and I, I think he's been seeing a little bit of players like support and jungle as well. I think he's kind of a similar situation to Achilles. Like, he plays solo support and jungle to a pretty decent level all three of them so i think i'll put him in a plus for that just because he plays multiple roles pretty well and you never know where he's going and things like that hachiman pretty fair he can flex as a mid pick if you want a magical adc and he's a decent adc as well hades i'm not fully on the hades hype train i've seen a lot of people rating hades as like one of the best solo laners in the game i feel like he's good but Nothing's changed fundamentally in solo enough, right, for Hades to go from like a, you know, how he's always been, where he's like a uh, lame bully that doesn't really do too well in team fights. I don't think anything's fundamentally changed enough to where Hades is going to be a top solo laner for that long. I think feel like he's more of a flavor of the month pick, and he's going to fall off in favor of more traditional solo laners. I'll put him in A plus for now, just because he is performing very well, and obviously you can build Ring of Akate on him. I've seen that, but um. Yeah, it just his standard build, like Bancroft's into Typhons into Defense, you can do pretty well from solo with him. I wouldn't really recommend him anywhere else. I think he can be a decent flavor pick in jungle, but I wouldn't really recommend it if you want to win. It's just kind of funny. Um, but yeah, I feel like he's going to fall off pretty soon. A lot of people saying he's like a super top solo and I don't really agree with that. But for now, he's getting results from a lot of people are playing him, so I'll put him in A+. Hebo is very good, actually. I want to put him in S. He's actually quite good at shutting down a lot of the top junglers. Like, he he just shits on Baka completely. Like, a Baka dives on him, he just gets 3'd and ulted and dies before he can even get value from his ult. Uh, pretty good mid laner, very good jungler, in my opinion. Um, obviously, he's super high burst, which is what you want from your mid laner right now to burst down all the magical ADCs and auto-attack junglers. Uh, does really well into Nemesis as well, because if she tries to shield, you just 3 her and ult her, and her shield does nothing, because it removes it instantly when you 3. Um, kind of a meta call, honestly. It does really well against a lot of the top junglers. Um, it doesn't get dived too hard by them. And obviously just having, having the insane burst damage from mid is very good, as well as him being a good jungle pick. Hell is honestly overrated in my opinion. I want to put her A+, plus, but like a lot of people are valuing her pretty highly. No, I'm just going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to go for putting her in A+. Plus. I don't think she's that good. I think she's fallen off quite a lot. I think Afro is the more valuable healer. And honestly, she's just very easy to dive. Like, a lot of the auto-attack junglers can just stick to her super easily. Like, the cleanse doesn't matter against Baka. She can cleanse the slow, I guess. But Baka's going to have Ace and Fatalis, and he's going to be way faster than her anyway. He can just run her down. Uh, Nemesis ult on a hell just kind of ruins her. Hebo can burst her down very easily. Um, a lot of the top solo laners and junglers can just dive her for free. I don't think she's that good. Himdalia, once again, uh, back to S+. I think I had this guy like down an S or something in my last tier list. Uh, I think people overreacted to his nerfs. He's still a top ADC and I think he could even see a bit of play in mid. I don't see a reason why Haim wouldn't work in mid if you wanted a magical ADC, but he's also just an insanely good ADC pick. Still as good as he ever was. People overreacted to the nerfs. Even myself, I moved him down one tier. He's still S+. Hera, one of the old metas, kind of like not top mid laners, but like a little bit below those top mid laners. Uh, I feel like she's in a similar place to Discordia. She's still very good, still brings a lot of control uh, to team fights and decent burst damage, but there's probably better mid laners you can go for. Hercules, S. Honestly, maybe bordering on S+. I think Hercules is one of the top solo laners right now. Like, you can rush Gaia, you can go Sledge, you could even try Soul Eater on him. I've tried that, though I think it's kind of meme. You're probably better off just going for Gaia. Uh, Hercules was already pretty good in the meta before, when uh, Glad Shield and Berserker Shield still existed in their tier 2 farms. And the removal of those just means he has less competition in terms of, like, high-pressure warriors in solo. Uh, these, he bullies mages super hard because of the big heal. He's not the best, like, super late game, but, um... I think he's a very good solo laner, and also I didn't even mention this up until now, he's a very good support as well. Seeing a lot of playing support, just being able to pull people into his team on cooldown for free kills is very good. So I think he plays support and solo to an S tier placement, which is why I was considering maybe moving him up to S+. Because uh, he's like a top, a top solo laner and a pretty good support as well, but um, for now I'll put him in S. Horus, so once again, the argument of ranked and casuals versus um, SPL comes into the into the picture. Um, I think Horus is like a little bit worse in ranked and casuals than he is in SPL. I might put him in A+. I think he's very close to S though, like Horus Ultimate is very valuable. He's super high pressure for the laning phase in duo. Like if you want to pick a magical ADC like Freya, maybe you can get her through her weak early game before she gets her Kate very easily with Horus because he's a super high pressure support there. And he can also heal her, which is nice. And then, like, Horus can kind of just do things that no other support can do, which is always going to be pretty valuable. But, um, I don't think he's insanely strong right now. 
Who are you's not amazing? Probably A tier. In the last meta, it looked like he was going to be a bit of a rising star, and like his passive is good against the crit builds that most people are going right now, but he's going to get out traded by all the magical ADCs once, he get, once they get Ring of Hikate online, and I don't think he's that good as a mid laner. A lot of the ADCs that are pretty good right now that are seeing play are like a lot of the Hunters, sorry, are stuff like Cupid that can kind of flex into mid as well, or just they're insanely broken, like Haim, obviously. Because um, you have to you have to make an argument either, like for a Hunter right now, you have to make an argument either they're better than magical ADCs, so you, you like stuff like Haim, where like you actually want to pick them over one of the magical ADCs that can abuse Ring of Akate, or you want them as a mid laner. Uh, and Huyi doesn't really fill either of those, so I think he's just pretty balanced. Hunbats was doing pretty well in the last meta, but he just isn't that good right now. I think I'll put him in A tier. He's fallen off a lot. Like he doesn't abuse any of the good jungle items that well. Like obviously he uses Heartseeker pretty well um, and the other like ability based assassin items, but he really doesn't use um, any of the new items that well. Um, and a lot of the rising stars are gods that like abuse the new items like Serrated Edge and things like that. Hunbats just really doesn't, he doesn't do anything that's like super unfair. And that 120 second cooldown ultimate is a really big hit. Like, his ult's on such a longer cooldown than other junglers that they can really abuse that. Like, you don't even need to time a track that well. You can just go like, oh, my ultimate just came up 10 seconds ago. Bat's ultimate is probably not up. I can just kill him for free. And um, if you can just kind of find him in his jungle and you can invade for free because he doesn't have his ult. Or if he tries to contest, you can kind of just kill him because you do have yours. So the ult cooldown nerf hit him a lot as well, I think. Goddess of Magic. I feel like she should be good right now, but she's kind of not. Like, she's a really high pressure mid. She has tons of... Um, wave clear and quite a lot of early burst damage. The silence is pretty nice. She has insane objective uh, clear potential. She's not really seeing enough play for me to put her any higher than A tier, I feel like, even though I feel like she probably is worthy of an A+. Plus. I don't know, maybe you just don't want her as a mid laner that much because like you want magical ADCs and physical mid laners, but I feel like if you have the room to have her on your team as a mid laner, I feel like she's still pretty good. Izanami is not that good. She's not really gonna outperform a lot of the other top ADCs. And uh, she doesn't really work as a mid laner either. I feel like she's kind of in a position like Apollo where like she doesn't really work in mid and she's just going to get bodied by most gods in ADC. She doesn't really do enough. Giannis. Giannis is good. I'd say he's probably on a similar level to uh, Discordia, Hera kind of picks for mid lane. Like if you want a mage, you can't really go wrong with Giannis as long as you're good at him. He's pretty difficult to be good with, but if you have a good Giannis, they can definitely do a lot of work. And obviously Giannis does things that no other mid laner can do. Jingwei. I wouldn't say she's S+. Plus. She doesn't like completely break the game, but she's a completely solid ADC pick that you can't really go wrong with. Obviously, she has built-in crit, so she uses the new crit builds very well. Uh, does pretty well with Atalantis as well. Just Jingwei is always good because of how safe she is as an ADC. Like she can dash out of knockups. She has a pr the dash is pretty long range itself. She can ult out of things if she needs to and get over walls. She can back when she's low and just get back into lane for free. Jingwei is always a god I recommend if you're like new to the ADC role and want to learn it just because of how insanely safe she is and she still does pretty good work in late game team fights and can box while in lane as well even though she's so safe. Yom, I don't know. I don't really see where Yom is insane right now. I, I think A plus is pretty fair for him. I think he plays support pretty well and solo lane like probably to an A plus level. I don't know, he doesn't really bring too much to the table. Like he's pretty good disruption in team fights and it's basically impossible to lose lane in solo with Yom. You have really good totem pressure, you can clear the wave from miles away, so and like if, if you're ever in trouble, like you get ganked or whatever, you can just ult out for free. So he never really loses lane, he's a very safe pick, much like Jingwei actually. Um, and can do work in team fights as well. I think A plus is pretty fair for him. Kali, probably also A plus. She uses the new items pretty well, like she can rush a golden blade if she wants to like super power farm or she can still kind of go that um, early game power curve build with Crusher into boots. Her builds kind of got shifted around a lot, like I'm pretty sure she goes Atalanta's now. Um, she still might go like Atalanta's Xy Kins, like a 40% pen plus um, Xy kind of build and like shred people. I've not really tried Kali on the new patch, but I feel like she has to be pretty good. Like she was decent before and the new items kind of favor her, like she does pretty well with um serrated edge like if you blink in three and two and then like they dash away you follow them with your with your jump then you're getting serrated edge value which is very good um so yeah i think she has to be pretty good right okay this is getting really long and we're only like halfway through so i'm gonna try and go a little quickly on these picks uh kepri is pretty good it's nice to be able to res your teammates but i don't think he really brings anything groundbreaking to the support role and doesn't see play anywhere else king arthur is still decent i think a plus i don't think he's quite an sts all learner uh, you can rush Gaia with him and it's kind of a similar level of sustain. You can try Soul E2 as well, but I think Gaia is the better choice. Cuckoo, not the best. 
Very hard to confirm his damage in this meta. It gets died for free by a lot of the auto attack junglers because he has no jump. Kumba, probably A+. Plus. Does very well against a lot of the auto attackers in this meta. Like, you can mez them and if you wake them up early, that auto attack slow is really good. Um, like, pretty good against Baka. Once the CC immunity on his ult runs out, you can just Kumba ult him into the sky and he doesn't really do too much with the rest of that. And you can kind of nuke him as he comes down. I think Kumba's a very valuable support pick right now. Kuzumbo, very similar. Does very well in the auto attack meta. He can pop Shell and Thorns and just kind of run at the back line and, and just do what he wants. Pretty good solo and a pretty good support as well. Loki, trash. Loki's still trash. And the whole meta with like Nemean existing and Shell just... Can I make a D tier? Uh, how do I do this? Add. Uh, Loki tier. And let's make it black. And there we go. This is where Loki belongs. Loki is complete and utter garbage right now. Like, you just buy Nemean and he does nothing. Like, you just block his first auto attack after he ults, and then what is he going to do? Like, Nemean single-handedly makes Loki completely useless, and also the prevalence of upgraded shell as well. Like, he relies on that big one auto attack in a similar way to Daji, but Daji has, like, value elsewhere in her kit. Like, her ult is pretty valuable. Um, Loki is just useless. Don't pick Loki, please. He's going to get reworked soon, which is cool, but for now, just don't pick him. Medusa, she did get some buffs. They were pretty good, but her dash still sucks ass. I think B is probably a good place for her. I was going to put her in A, but I don't really see any reason to pick her over the other um, ADCs right now. I was going to put her in A because she kind of can play mid decently well, but um, honestly, she's not that great. Mercury, probably S. I think he's one of the better um, auto attack junglers right now. Can use Serrated Edge, but it's not the best because you often want to save your dash. But you can kind of like ult in uh, to uh, dash them into a wall and then like one them. And then you get in Serrated Edge value, which is decent. But um, Mercury just does very well with like the crit builds right now and can burst people down super hard. Merlin's still a top mid laner in my opinion. He's, he brings a, less, a little less burst to the table, but he obviously has like insane amounts of like sustained damage output, very good for objectives. And just in general, he has more abilities and more damage than pretty much every other mid laner, and that's always going to be good. Mulan, probably A+. Plus. I think Mulan's a pretty good solo laner right now. She's very high pressure, super high damage in the early game, and you can kind of get a lead from that. And I've also seen some people trying to make her work in support. I don't think she's amazing in support, but the fact that she is seeing a little bit of viable play there means she probably is worthy of an A plus placement. Neath A plus works as a mid laner. Um, the changes to her make her a little bit better as an ADC, and also the backflip being a lot faster makes her super safe. Well, not super safe, but a lot safer than she was before. And uh, yeah, like I said, you, you can make her work as a physical mid if you want a magical ADC, and she's decent in the ADC role as well. Nemesis S plus. One of the best abusers of uh, Serrated Edge in the entire game. You just kind of like ult, dive the back line, you two them, use your three to either auto cancel or um, absorb an ability and then use your dash and you're getting full Serrated Edge value. And uh, you can really stick to them super well because of them slows and get full value from that item. Uh, Golden Blade, obviously very good right now. Nemesis rushes Golden Blade to be able to farm super efficiently. Um, probably second best jungler to Baka in my opinion for like ranked casuals. I think in competitive she might be the best jungler. It kind of depends, but uh, for ranting casuals, I think Bakker is a little better because you can just like power farm and win the game from that. Neja is balanced. I think you can kind of play him in support and kind of play him in solo, but he's mostly a jungler. Uh, doesn't abuse any of the new items that well, but nothing wrong with Neja really. There's just better picks. Nike is probably balanced now. She went from like one of the best gods in the game to pretty garbage. Like Sunder counters her super well. And yeah, just like the ability to just buy Sunder and her shield is gone kind of makes her a bit useless. Like, yeah, you can pick her, but then like once the support or the solo lane, it gets to level 12 and buys Sunder, your ult kind of doesn't do much and you can just get blown up in teamfights super easily. Nox is fair, I guess. Actually, oh, I think she's probably B tier. I don't, maybe A, because I think honestly Nox is not bad as a support right now. I think her support is maybe better than her mid, actually. Uh, so maybe I'll put her in A, because I think she plays like support to like an almost A tier level and mid to like a B tier level, so maybe that's worthy of putting her as an A tier placement. Nua, A tier, I guess. I think I had her a little lower in my previous tier list, maybe in B tier. I think she's okay. There's just way better picks. Odin, pretty balanced. You can play him in solo, kind of, but he gets out traded a lot and he's a decent jungler a decent support much like achilles and um who else was it guan that can play like kind of three roles he plays three roles pretty well so i think at is a decent placement for him Oleron, i don't think he's quite s plus he's like a little bit below freya and heim for adc potential i think but definitely a high s tier placement for Oleron. 
His ultimate is consistently the most underrated ability in the entire game. That ult is completely busted, in my opinion, and can just like completely ruin people. Like if a backer dives you without beads, like as soon as he blinks in, you just ult and there's not much you can really do, honestly. Obviously, an insane abuse over ring of Akate, um, probably the second best user of it outside of Freya. Uh, very good in ADC, you can even see play in mid as well. Just a very solid pick right now. Osiris, probably A. He he does well in solo, he pretty much doesn't lose late and he can bully some matchups, but his team fight presence isn't amazing once he gets late game and honestly, there's just better picks than Osiris. Peli is very good actually, I think I'll put her in S because she's a very good jungler and also I've been experimenting with her in solo and I think she's pretty good there too. Persephone, S+. Plus. People are saying Persephone is like falling off, I don't agree. Persephone in the SPL is still seeing a shit ton of play and in high level rank she does very well. Obviously, I think if you're in a lower level of um, play, or if you don't know how to play her very well, maybe stay away from Persephone and just ban it. But um, uh, Persephone in the hands of a good player is still one of the most dominant mid laners in the entire game, uh, if not the best. So I think an S plus placement is all I can give her. Poseidon, I don't see a reason to pick Poseidon over anyone else. He's super easy to dive, like as long as you just have beads, you can beads the Kraken and then he doesn't really do anything. And once he Krakens, he's, his base kit is just kind of useless. Like you use your three and, and you Kraken and you won and if you don't kill that person, you just get dive for free. I don't really see a reason to pick Poseidon over like any other mid laner. Ra? Ra's pretty good. I don't think he's worthy of like an, an A plus or anything, but yeah, if you want to play Ra, he's fine. Raijin. So Raijin was another one of those um, mid laners that was pretty good in the previous meta, like Discordia, Hera. I think I'll put him A+. He's still a decent mid laner, but uh, his early game's kind of weak and he's pretty easy to shut down and dive because his 3 isn't really that reliable. Rama? I don't know if he's S or A+. He's probably A+. Like, he doesn't really do that well in mid and, like, you can make him work in ADC, but you kind of got to make sure the enemy aren't picking any of the magical ADCs because you'll just get outraded consistently. I think he's kind of similar to Jingwei, but he's just a little bit worse, so I think A+, is pretty fair for him. Rat? So everyone thought Rat was going to be pretty insane. I think he's just decent. I'll put him in A+, plus probably, because I think he plays a pretty good solo and a pretty good jungle. I don't think he's viable in support. But, um, yeah, I think the fact that he plays two roles decently well means I'll put him in A+. plus. But, yeah, everyone thought he was going to be, like, S plus tier, completely broken based on the Acorns. But, nah, he's not insane. Raven, probably S. I think Raven's a very good jungler right now. Surprisingly, actually makes very good use of Serrated Edge. Because, like, you can just, like, three someone and one someone and then, like, one, uh, two to duke an ability and then you gain full Serrated Edge value. And, uh, he kind of works as a little bit of a hybrid. Like, he can still make good use of Serrated Edge like the auto attack junglers can and he still abuses Heartseeker and all the other ability-based assassin items like, you know, gods like Pele can. So, I think Raven's a very strong jungler right now. Scylla? She's fair, I guess. I don't think she deserves anything higher than A tier. If you're good with Scylla, you can make very good use of her and burst people down super good. Like, her burst damage is very good, but... Her early game in mid is very weak and very low pressure, and it kind of just like gives up all the pressure to the enemy mid and ADC, uh, the enemy mid and jungle, sorry, and they can just kind of do what they want for free, so I don't think Scylla's amazing right now. Sir Ket? I've not really seen any Sir Ket, honestly. I'll probably just put her in A tier. Like, yeah, she's decent, um, probably doesn't use Serrated Edge that well. But yeah, the items just aren't the best for Sir Ket right now. There's, there's gods like further up here that can just use the items way better than she can, and... While she can kind of play support and she's a decent jungle, I don't think she's any higher than A. Set is, in my opinion, pretty good. I don't think he warrants an S placement, but maybe. I think he's probably a high A+, because he, he plays jungle quite well and he plays solo quite well as well. So, the fact that he plays two roles makes me want to maybe put him in S, but I think like a, a high A+, plus is probably where I put him. Skadi is not great. She gets dive for free. She kind of can play mid, which is like a little bit of a saving grace for her. But, um, not amazing. Sobek, one of the better supports and solos in the previous meta, but I don't think he's that good right now. He's fallen off a little bit. I think he's still very valuable. Like, having being able to pluck some of these um, low mobility magical ADCs like Oliver and Freya into your team is very good. Like, thing is, with, with the new solo meta, if you pick Sobek, you can't really just stay on mate the lane and be happy about it because you'll be giving a big lead to, like, all the kind of more damage-oriented solo laners that people are playing right now. And uh, I think he's still a good support. Sobek's still definitely a passable support. Sol, probably S. You can kind of play her mid, but she's mostly a magical ADC. Obviously, abuses Ring of Hikate really well. Um, and then just does Sol things. Wukong's pretty good. I'd probably put him in A+. Um, you can go Sol Eater like you kind of always could on Wukong, which is very strong. You can obviously just go Gaia and just be invincible and never lose lane because you're super safe and you have the sustain from Gaia. 
Or like I said, you can go the Soul Eater more aggressive route and then you can proxy very, very well because Soul Eater allows you to proxy waves super early. And then you can make those rotations. And you can sort of flex him into a little bit more damage oriented. And I honestly think he can jungle decently well too. So I think an A plus placement is pretty good for him. Probably like upper end of A plus. Susano, he's fine. He does pretty well with the um, standard ability based assassin items, but it doesn't really bring anything insane to the table compared to the other top junglers. Sylvanas, not great. He gets farmed a lot by the auto attack junglers right now because uh, he has such low mobility like a backer can just get on him for free and kill him. Nemesis ult just is he's dead if he gets Nemesis ulted basically. And like a lot of the top junglers farm him for free and a lot of the ADCs just kind of out pressure him. Terra's decent. She plays solo pretty well, plays support pretty well. I think A plus is pretty fair for Terra. Thanatos, actually not a bad serrated edge user. Like you can three and then one and then obviously using your two for the pen. So uses serrated edge decently well. Can actually farm pretty effectively with Golden Blade. I think works in solo okay. Works in jungle very well. Uh, I think A plus is fair. Morrigan, also probably A plus. She can turn into some pretty impactful gods like turn into Oleron, turn into Nemesis, turn into... Um, Cthulhu, things like that. And obviously a very high skill cap god, um, much like Persephone, if you're not good at Morrigan, don't pick her. But if you are good at Morrigan, she's definitely a pretty good mid laner right now. I also want, I also want to put Thor in S+, plus because he plays jungle very well and he's actually playing a lot of, um, I'm seeing a lot of success in solo right now with like Soul Eater and things like that. All just like standard defense builds and you can just like use your ult to rotate very early. I think the fact that he's like a top jungler and also a pretty good solo laner means that I want to put him in S plus instead of S. If if he was irrelevant in solo and only a jungler, I would probably have him in S. But I think the fact that he's viable in two roles makes me want to put him a little higher. But I think he's like lower end of S plus. He's not as good as these six here, but I think he still deserves to be here. Thoth, fine. You can pick Thoth. He's pretty good for like an artillery mage style. Obviously, they reverted the insane changes that they made to him in the PTS. So he's just as good as he's always been. Tia's okay. If you want a low risk solo laner that's almost always going to get through the laning phase just fine but not do anything insane you can pick tier ula s plus i think he plays mid very well if you want to have a magical adc and he also bodies the magical adcs quite well because like they want to have sustained fights like using ring of Fikate, uh getting multiple auto attacks on you ula can just like full combo you with the axe run away wait again and full combo you with the axe again and uh, he shuts down magical adcs that rely on sustained damage quite a lot and if you want to have a magical ADC yourself, you can just put Ula in mid and he works absolutely fine there too. So I think definitely S+, plus for similar reasons that Thor is S+, plus. plays two roles very well. For mana, I have no idea with the mana, honestly. I haven't really seen anyone play him. He's seen a little bit of play in the SPL, I think, so maybe I'll put him in A+. Plus. But I honestly have no idea where he's at right now. He's probably only a solo laner. I don't think he's a jungler, really. But yeah, I haven't really tried him in the new meta, and I haven't. no one's played him against me. I've only got a little bit of experience from, like, watching SPL and stuff, so I think A+, plus is fine for him. Vulcan's not the best. He gets dived very heavily by the junglers. His only, like, real safety is back off and, like, magma bombing or ulting himself. And, um, yeah, you can just, like, nem ult him, and then, you know, he has no way to really escape that. Thor can dive him for free, Baka can dive him for free, Cthulhu can dive him for free. Um, and he just doesn't, it's very hard to get his damage off. But I think if you're a very good Vulcan, it's, he's still definitely playable. Like, just because he's down here doesn't mean he's unplayable, because if you're good at Vulcan, he, like, jumps up a tier instantly. But um, if you're just an average Vulcan, I wouldn't really recommend playing him right now. Jibalanke is fair. Still has the ult, which is still a decent team fight, uh, team fight impact ult. Just because it doesn't stun anymore, like, the blind is still very valuable. More valuable in competitive than it is in ranked and casuals, because comms in ranked and casuals are either non-existent or very cluttered anyways, so it's less valuable, but he's an okay ADC. Doesn't really play mid either, which is kind of a problem, like a lot of the good hunters right now are ones that can flex into mid, but um, yeah, still decent. Jing Chen, still a pretty good support and can also play solo quite well as well. If you rush Gaia, you just have like so much regen that you're basically unkillable in solo. It almost forces people to go anti-heal because of that, but... If they don't go into heal, you're literally unkillable. So if you want a safe solo laner that can still make a decent teamfight impact, then go for Jing Chen. Yamoja, I think I have to still put her in S+. She's having so much impact, especially in the SPL, but also like ranked in casuals. But similar to Persephone and um, who else was it? Mori. Uh, you got to be good at Yamoja. If you, if you don't have much experience with her, just because she's S+, don't, don't pick her just because she's S+. You have to be good with your mojo to make an impact with her, but if you are good with her, she's definitely an S plus character. Ymir, I want to put Ymir in S too, because I love Ymir and I feel like he's being very undervalued right now. And he has seen a little bit of play in SPL, but I don't think I can, in good in good faith, put him on the level of these S tier characters. A plus is pretty good for him though. I feel like he's being underrated. The wall changes make him super strong. 
He can get picked on because of his lack of mobility, like a backer or a Nem can shut him down very easily, but in certain situations, you may can be like one of the best supports in the game. The walls are insane, the freezes are always been good. And honestly, the Frostbite passive, like where it reduces their damage output, is very underrated, and he's pretty good for objective secure as well. Zeus is garbage. Probably C tier. Much like Apwash, he gets dived completely for free. Um, doesn't really use the items that well right now. Like, he can apply Spear of the Magus to multiple people fairly easily, which is nice, but um, any of these like top junglers or soul laners, like Thor dives in for free. Baka kills him for free. Nemesis ults him and he's literally just dead. Um, Cthulhu can dive him for free. Arachne is especially good against him because he has no way to really get her off him and, he, and she just stuns him and kills him. Hebo can just blink him, ult him and he dies. Mercury can guard him for free. Hercules pulls him out of his team and then he dies. Like, he just... Zeus feels super weak and it feels like everything in the meta is against him right now and he can't really get anything done. And finally, Jongadonga. I feel like he's a pretty good solo learner right now. And I'm not sure if he's that good in mid. I haven't really seen anyone try him in mid yet, but I think he's a decent solo. But yeah, that's my tier list. Let me know if you agree down below. This one was incredibly long. Um, I probably should have been a little faster on those first picks. I spent a lot of time explaining things, but I like to go in depth on these tier lists and explain why I'm placing things where they are because like, I'm, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people will just skip to the end, look at the tier list and go, oh, I'm going to pick Ula because he's in S+. But I feel like if you really want to be good at the game and you want to understand why you're picking the certain gods, it's good for me to go into detail with these things. Like, you know, Ula is S+ plus because he flexes into mid and does very well against like the magical ADCs because he can burst them down and not let them use their sustained damage output from Ring of Hikata and things like that. Like having a reason why a character is very good and not just putting characters in S plus because I like them kind of thing is, is a good way to do it in my opinion. So it is a very long video, but hopefully those of you that want to watch the long explanations and, and gain knowledge from that, you can do that. And those of you who just want a tier list, you probably skip to the end anyway, or you've just skipped through sections and watched a few little bits. That's fine too. If you just want a tier list that you can pick like characters that are good, that's what probably what a lot of people came for for. But if you did want the long explanations, then you could have watched at the end. But yeah, if there's any big major meta shifts, which there might be because the mid-season meta is still developing in my opinion, I might make a new tier list. And also keep a lookout for the top three gods for every role video coming out soon if you want a more condensed look at like what the best gods are.